In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When our stewardship chair and I decided on a date for the ministry fair and our kickoff for our fall stewardship season, I immediately looked at the readings of the day. Since our theme is joy, I was hoping I could find something related to joy in the readings. When I saw the Old Testament reading was Job, I knew I was in trouble. The only thing worse would have been the Book of Lamentations. But I thought, well, this is the end of Job. This is where God finally answers Job's prayer. Surely, this is the good news we've been waiting for. As I mentioned last week, the primary question that Job had was not why all these bad things were happening, but where God was in the midst of his suffering and pain. One would hope that when that answer came, there would be relief, possibly even joy. Then I read this text, and it did not make me joyful. The text begins with, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Whirlwind is another word for bad storm. First of all, it is almost never good news when God enters a conversation with a storm. It's not like the storm was this coincidence. That was God's storm. And from the storm, God said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you will declare to me. Now, this is not the tone I was expecting. I've read this text many times, and every time it comes up, it shocks me a little. To begin, God told Job that he knew nothing. Then there is the gird up your loins line, which seems a little peculiar. It was not so peculiar in this time period. And this time, this phrase was used when people were preparing for battle, when great courage was expected. God was basically saying to Job, get ready, because this is going to be uncomfortable. This is not going to be an easy conversation. And it wasn't. God proceeded to ask Job over 70 questions, none of which Job could answer, none of which he expect was expected to answer. The first example is a, a good example of what comes. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? If I was to sum up these questions, it would probably come back to, do you have any idea who you're talking to right now? Now one would think that would be an obvious question. Job has, Job has been questioning God. But what God is saying is that any knowledge that Job may think he has is a tiny, tiny fraction of what God knows. It is a mere drop in the ocean of God's vast knowledge. And I understand that as much as my tiny, tiny human brain can, but I still find myself disturbed by this response. After all that Job has been through, I would think that it would not be too much to ask for a little compassion on the part of God. We know that God is a loving God, and this doesn't seem evident in this reading. Now, I could say, well, this is the Old Testament, vengeful and wrathful God. Jesus brought us the softer and gentler side of God. Yet I don't really believe that. I believe that the God we meet in the Old Testament is the very same God that we come to know in the New Testament. It's just different sides to a very complex and incomprehensible God. At the same time, as Christians, we've received some special information from God, as God came in the form of a man so that we could get to know him. God wanted to be known. God also knew that as humans, we needed to know him. We needed a relationship with God. So God, with his infinite power and infinite knowledge, was born to a peasant girl in the form of a baby and lived among real people, people like Job, who wanted to be in the presence of God. 
Now this is not to say that once Jesus came in the form of man, we all got with the program. We can see from the gospel reading that even the disciples were still having trouble understanding. Jesus had just told them about his death so that they would understand the kind of sacrifice that he was making. This is the third time he explained his death to them. And they responded by asking him whether they could be in the seat of power when he received glory. While Job could not understand the God of absolute power, the disciples could not understand a God who acted as a servant and expects us to be servants as well. So where is the joy? Where is the joy in a God who comes from the storm and makes us uncomfortable? Where is the joy in a God who asks us to sacrifice and serve? What well, is not a happy or carefree joy, but it is joy. There is joy because we have a God who is present in our lives. When God asked Job all of those questions, the questions referenced the same questions that Job had asked him during those 35 chapters. God had been listening all of that time to all the ranting and raving. God was the only one who listened. While Jesus has asked us to make sacrifices and serve others, he is only asking what he has already done. We have a God who listens to us knows us, wants us to know him, and wants us to experience joy. Not just in this life, but in the life to come. Life eternal. One of the questions that God asked Job was, who laid the cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted with joy? The joy that God brings us is bigger than us. We have a God to whom the stars sing and heavenly beings shout with joy. And that same God who has the power to create the stars came down from heaven so that he could heal the sick, touch the lepers, feed the hungry, give hope to the hopeless, forgive those who sinned, who sinned against him, and then be insulted, betrayed, abandoned, beaten, and killed. And there is nothing we can say to thank a God who did that. There is another hymn that is sung around Christmas that I love, which also is not explicitly a Christmas hymn. And the last verse is, What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can give him, I give him my heart. Our God, the creator of all things, the salvation of all people, continues to ask something of us, of each one of us. God believes that we have something to give him. And there is joy in that. God believes we have something to give. And who are we to question God? Amen.